Uh, I was in my uh, alum mater yesterday, Carrot College, Kohat. Educational institution and education have always been very close to my heart. Uh, well, my heart, the Arabic word kalb, uh, which has been applied for it, is about. Uh, is there any issue with the. What? Yeah, you can sort no, it out, don't worry. Hello, hello. Is it okay? Okay. okay. Get these small tips and advices, so don't worry about it. <laughs> it's all official protocol, to which I'm not that familiar with, anyways. So, yeah, uh, reading, understanding, expressing, uh, knowing, realizing, learning, these are the words uh, which I always fancy and fantasize. Be it in medical sciences, natural sciences, social sciences, I've always taken keen interest to know, to understand, to appreciate. And that drive have always kept me close to the educational institutions. And I've been very fortunate. Uh, I've never attended a formal uh, degree course in my life. I've done my graduation as a private student and uh, attended uh, my master's uh, degree also as a private student. Uh, but I was very fortunate to have exposure of Harvard, Oxford, Berkeley, Yale, uh, LUMS, quite infamous LUMS interaction <laughs> last time, but anyways, LUMS. <laughs> Now, Aga Khan, you know. So, so these, these educational institutions all around uh, the globe have always attracted me. Uh, my own understanding of, of uh, human history, of last 5,000 years documented history I'm referring to. If you closely try to monitor what has happened, uh, the initial uh, endeavors of the Greeks on that, that small city states, which lasted more or less by the end of, of uh, Aristotle, excuse me, era, uh, initiating with the sophists, the creation of the knowledge was in very embryonic stage. But that embryonic stage has more or less provided the entire foundation for the rest of the civilization to be erected. And then you have got these 14, 1500 years of dark ages, and then you have a glimpse of Reformation, Italian Reformation, and then Renaissance. And here we are today as we are, and we are speaking and, and communicating with all these modern tools, treating our patients in, in a manner which is unprecedented. The life expectancy has grown. So all which Mr. President was, was telling me in our initial brief this morning that as the founder of this institution, he had an inspiration from one word, Ikra. So read. Uh, when, when it was revealed to read, uh, to me, it seems as all the five senses along with the audible one, were instigated, were stimulated, that they should be brought uh, in application. Because just read is not an end in itself. Read and do what? Do you, read is not an end in itself. So it has to have a meaningful objectivity. Uh, as Iqbal uh, famously once said in Persian, that uh, Guft Adam Yazdara Ham Chuni Nast Digar Hich Mago. God asked Adam that it is like this and don't say anything else. Adam Guft Ham Chuni Nast in Ham Chuni in Boshat. He replied that yes, it is like this. Would it remain like that? So that sense of inquisitiveness of, of Adam 
is what God tries to stimulate. He encourages it or her. And at times put, puts conditions so that he can defy those conditions, he can flout those conditions and have that lovely journey of exploration and discoveries and for this entire universe was created to know, to understand, to appreciate. It is not, we are not here just for consumption, material consumption I'm referring to. And there is a, a misconception with the very word of risk also that risk is only associated with our material sustenance. Risk primarily is an aspect of knowledge you receive. We are all marzook. We receive knowledge. And in, in this short span of time, uh, it is not just the material sustenance which is allocated. One can be uh, fortunate and, and uh, lucky, feel lucky about it. It is the kind of a knowledge you receive in this allocated time. And if you are deprived of that, you are experiencing poverty. Poverty needs to be defined and redefined. Uh, so will, with all my, this journal observation and statement, I think so, let's have more interactive and uh, challenging question and answer session. And let's see what is there for me <laughs> lying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, with those really insightful and opening remarks, uh, and the gauntlet, gauntlet has been thrown, mm -hmm. so with that challenge, We'll open it up to our students uh, of the Al Khan University. I will request the students to put their hand up, uh, whoever would like to ask the first question, and we will ask them to rise. I see a student there in a black suit. If you could please stand up and ask His Excellency your question. And kindly introduce yourself with, with the area you come from. <laughs> My name is Tanzil Ali Khan. I am from Gilgit, Baltistan, Ghazar, Yasin. And uh, I am first year FS student, Faculty of Arts and Science at Aga Khan University. Sir, first of all, I am very thankful to you that you are here today with us, and it's a great honor for us, right? So, as a part of Gilgit, Baltistan, my question from you would be like that. From 1970, uh, constitution Kashmir se alag huye, huye to, tab se leke ab tak we are not given the fundamental rights to us. So whenever we, if we are not the part of Pakistan, jab kahi bhi ham ikhatte hote apni hukuk ke liye, apni rights ke liye, apni subsidies ke liye, to government, state kya karti hai? Schedule 4 ke tehet anti-terrorism ham pe lagu karti hai aur hume takela jata hai, suppress kiya jata hai, jo ki bahut bahut mushkil waq hai. So last time, हम last time हमारे पास एक वाक्य होगा चलास फोड़ूर के उसमें आपको इलम है भी यानी तो वहाँ पे क्या किया जाता है लोगों के innocent pupils को मारा जाता है दहशत गिरदी के एक के तहत तो वहाँ पे एक state responsible होता है state responsible होता है कि अगर एक बंदे का खून हो जाए तो state responsible होता है कि उसको inquiry कर ले लेकिन अब तक कोई वो नहीं हुआ हमारे माये एक माँ वहाँ पे थी जो जिसने अभी देखिए हम गिलगित पाकिस्तान से अपने एफवाज को बेचते हैं महाजू पर वो सेव करने के लिए अभी हम नोबत ये आ चुकी है कि हमारे माये भी गोलियां खा रही है और उसके बाद हमारे पास ये है कि कश्मीर हम सड़क हुए कश्मीर को एक कंस्टिट्यूशन एक सेटअप दे दिया उनको एक प्राइम मिनिस्टर दे दिया उनको एक यूनिवर्सिटी दी मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटीज दे दिए उनको हमारे पास इंजीनियरिंग यूनिवर्सिटीज दी लेकिन गिलगित पाकिस्तान को क्या दिया कुछ भी नहीं दिया वहां पे जंडे दिए गए गिलत बस्तान को लाठियों के जोर से चलाया जा रहा है हमें कोई एक अच्छी मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटीज नहीं दे दी गई हमारी सिक्योरिटी का ख्याल नहीं रखा गया स्टेट की रिस्पांसिबिलिटी है कि प्रोटेक्शन दे सिक्योरिटी दे फूड दे दे लेकिन आई एम सो सॉरी लेट्स कम टू द क्वेश्चन सो दैट वी कैन 
सो लेकिन अगर स्टेट ये नहीं देना चाहती है तो ठीक है हम ऑटोनोमस कर ले हमें अलग कर दे वी वॉन्ट टू बी सेपरेट नेशन एंड वी विल बी यूर फ्रेंड्स एज गुड फ्रेंड्स सो माई क्वेश्चन इज दैट वेयर इज द सोशल जस्टिस वाई वी कान गिव ऑन द सोशल जस्टिस हम कहीं भी फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच नहीं है लास्ट टाइम मंजूर पश्चिम को अंदर कर लिया था फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच उन वो बात करते हैं तो अभी हमारे पास बाबा जान है हमारे नवाज खान जी उनको अंदर डालेंगे वी वॉन्ट सिक्योरिटी फॉर दम एज वेल तो हमें सिक्योरिटी चाहिए वेयर इज द सोशल जस्टिस इमरान रियाज खान को बंद के मुंह बंद की जाती है इमरान खान के मुंह बंद किया वेयर इज द सोशल जस्टिस वी वॉन्ट द फ्रीडम सो प्लीज यूर डन Okay 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 so you don't First of all main aapke iya kana budu ke sath hi samajh gaya tha ki mujhe jo hai na badi taiyari ke sath jawab dena hai aur saath se mera iya kana stain pe dil mein zyada zor ho gaya ke ya allah meri madad farma aur usme you know at times it is not your intellect or understanding which is the problem but it is the level of emotions you are charged with becomes a part of the problem aap koi cheez dekhna chahte hain uske niche ek screen emotions ki hoti hai aur us emotional screen mein jab aap usko view karna chahte hain wo tasveer wahi nazar aati hai jo wahan se reflect hokar aapke zehn pe निछावर हो रही होती मेरे भाई मेरी जान गिलगित बल्तिस्तान इज पार्ट ऑफ पाकिस्तान एंड इन शाह इट विल रिमेन पार्ट ऑफ पाकिस्तान दुनिया में जो मॉडर्न नेशन स्टेट्स बनी है ना मुख्तलफ एक्सपीरियंसिस के तहत प्रिंसिपैलिटीज की इनकॉर्पोरेशन हुई है ये मुझे और आपको कोई जान बाबा या खान या जो भी नाम है मैं किसी के नाम की तस्दीक नहीं करना चाहता वो इस तरीके से बयान करते हैं जैसे इंग्लैंड कोई पाँच हज़ार साल का तजर्बा है जर्मनी छः हज़ार साल का तजर्बा है इटली नौ हज़ार साल का तजर्बा है ऐसा नहीं है ऐसा क्या है ऐसा नहीं है इटालियन यूनिफिकेशन ऑलमोस्ट हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी ईयर्स की एक्सपेरिमेंट आपको हिस्ट्री में रोम मिलेगा इटली नहीं मिलेगा आपको हिस्ट्री uh, में फ्लोरेंस मिलेगा इटली नहीं मिलना मिलान है इटली नहीं है इसी तरह जर्मन यूनिफिकेशन है इस तरह यूके की यूनिफिकेशन है इस तरह पाकिस्तान की है जो इंडियन यूनियन है अंडर ब्रिटिश राज भी ना ये एक दिन में ब्रिटिश राज नहीं बना था ये कोई मोर और लेस डेढ़ सौ दो सौ साल उनको लगे और आहिस्ता आहिस्ता इसको इनकॉर्पोरेट करते गए आप अपने इलाके की तारीख भी देखेंगे ना तो महाराजा उनसे गुजरों से लड़ाइयाँ लड़ते हुए और सिखों से लड़ाइयाँ लड़ते हुए और पूरे कश्मीर की ये क्या थी उस तरफ जारस्ट रशिया था इस तरफ ब्रिटिश एम्पायर थी और वो इस स्ट्रेटिजिक एरिया को उस तरफ सिंगसियांग का इलाका था उस तरफ कजाकिस्तान और किर्गिस्तान जिसको वेस्ट तुर्किस्तान कहते थे ये इलाका था ये तमाम इलाके इस तरह तारीखी तौर पर एक दूसरे के साथ इख्तलात करते रहे आपको फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन भी है आपको फ्रीडम ऑफ ओपिनियन की भी इंटाइटलमेंट है इतने बड़े मजमे में मुल्क के वज़ी अजम के सामने जो आपके दिल में है आपने कहा है तो किसी ने स्टाइफल तो नहीं किया आपको ये तो आपका आर्गूमेंट इधर ख़त्म हो जाता है या तो ये हो खुदा न खास्ता के आपको डिस्करेज किया हो मॉडरेटर ने आपको रोकने की कोशिश की मैंने नहीं की अच्छा इसके बाद खुदा न खास्ता आपको कोई नुकसान हो तब भी कोई नुकता चीनी बन सकती है अगर ये दोनों चीज़ें नहीं हो रही हैं तो इसका मतलब है कि आपका ये इल्ज़ाम कि यहाँ फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन नहीं है इसमें वज़न कम हो जाता होगा कम वज़न होता पॉलिटिकल इंस्टेबिलिटी के तहत इस मुल्क की हमारी अपनी चकट हिस्ट्री है उस पर अगर मैं चाहूँ तो घंटों बात हम कर सकते Uh, अगर जिस दौरान की तरफ आप मुझे uh, इशारा दे रहे हैं उस दौरान ही में यहाँ पे ऐसे ऐसे जर्नलिस्ट थे उनको गोलियाँ मारी गई uh, उनके साथ और ऐसे हरकत हुई जो कि फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन के जमरे में तो बिल्कुल नहीं आती 
लेकिन हमारे मुल्क का एक पॉलिटिकल और सोशल और जर्नलिस्टिक कल्चर है नहीं होना चाहिए इस तरह इसको डिस्करेज करना चाहिए लेकिन ये एक स्पेसिफिक दौर के साथ नहीं जुड़ा हुआ मैं हुकूमत में आता हूँ तो मुझे इजहार राय जो है ना वो जहर लगता है अगर आपको दे दूँ हुकूमत तो आपको जहर लगना शुरू हो जाती है दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम हम उसको एज अ प्रिंसिपल नहीं ट्रीट करते हैं हम उसको इवेंट बेस पिक करके चेरी पिकिंग के तहत ट्रीट करते हैं और फिर एक उसके इर्द गिर्द नरेटिव बना लेते हैं कि देखा जुल्म अजीम आज कल जो हो रहा है और वो सारे मजलूम पहले कुछ सालों तक ालिम की कतार में चल रहे होते हैं जो असल बात है वो गिलगित बल्तिस्तान के स्टेटस की है वो बात आपकी दुरुस्त है कि गिलगित बल्तिस्तान हम आप जानते हैं कि एक स्ट्रेटिकली इंगेजमेंट हमारी जो उस रीजन में है हिंदुस्तान के साथ हमारा आ, और उनका हमारे साथ आ, तीन जंगे हम लड़ चुके हैं ओवर द इशू ऑफ कश्मीर कुछ लोगों का ये व्यू है कि जी बी या नॉर्दर्न एरियाज जो हमारा है वो रवायती तौर पर कश्मीर का हिस्सा है एक व्यू ये है कि नहीं उनकी अपनी डिस्टिंक्ट आइडेंटिटी है ये आप डोमेस्टिक कंजम्पन या पोलिटिकल डिस्कोर्स के लिए ऑन द क्वेश्चन ऑफ आइडेंटिटी रख सकते हैं लेकिन जब आप यू एन के इंटरनेशनल फ्रेमवर्क में किसी मैटर को रिजॉल्व करते हैं तो फिर उसी फ्रेमवर्क के तहत ही चीज़ों को देखना पड़ेगा हम उससे बाहर नहीं निकल सकते लिहाजा उसको एक एज अ होल रीजन ऑफ कश्मीर के तौर पे ट्रीट किया जाता है मीन वाइल ये सोल्यूशन पाकिस्तान में बार बार अटैम्प्ट हुई है और उसी को रैशनलाइज करने की कोशिश की जा रही है कि बाय द टाइम वी हैव दैट सेटल्ड स्टेटस एक ऐसी इंटरम अरेंजमेंट हो जिसमें उनको नेशनल असम्बली में रिप्रजेंटेशन मिल जाए सनेट में रिप्रजेंटेशन मिल जाए बाकी फोरम्स पर आ जाए एन में भी उनका हिस्सा आ जाए ये तमाम चीज़ें पॉलिटिकल प्रोसेस का हिस्सा होती हैं इसको पीसफुल पॉलिटिकल एक्सप्लाइटेशन के अंदाज में चलानी चाहिए दिट शुड बी सेनर वॉइस मेरी आवाज़ आपकी आवाज़ के साथ मिलनी चाहिए दूसरी की आवाज़ें आपके आवाज़ के साथ मिलनी चाहिए लेकिन इसमें एलिमेंट ऑफ रिजेंटमेंट जब आप डालते हैं ना तो आप अपने केस को कमज़ोर करते हैं uh, मुझे नहीं पता आप एक स्पेसिफिक इंसिडेंट का बात जिसका कर रहे हैं किस के माँ को गोलियाँ लगी हैं बहुत ट्रेजिक है अगर ऐसा हुआ है आपको पता है ना कि मतलब हमारे इस मुल्क में नबे हज़ार इस तरह माएँ बहने बाप बेटे गोलियाँ बम खा के गए हैं कोई एक नहीं है अगर इस एक माँ की बुनियाद पे आप पूरे के पूरे रियासत के तस्वर को अगर मैं अगर के हवाले से कह रहा हूँ सकता आप ना कर रहा हूँ अगर उसको एक ालिमाना अंदाज में पेश किया जाए तो शायद वो इंसाफ के करीब ना हो हमारे यहाँ वायलेंट सोसाइटी है हमारी हाईली वेपनाइज सोसाइटी है हमारे यहाँ वायलेंस का रुझान मजहब के नाम पे जबान के नाम पे नस्ल के नाम पे वो अपनी पीक पे है पहले ये सेटल करना होगा कि राइट टू वायलेंस किसके पास है वायलेंस की मनापली रियासत के पास रहेगी हो सकता है रियासत उसकी एप्लीकेशन गलत करे लेकिन रियासत में सेंस ऑफ अकाउंटेबिलिटी मौजूद है एक मैकेनिज्म मौजूद है एक प्रोसेस मौजूद है जब आप उसको ट्रांसफर करके इक्वेट करके कोई भी गिरो वो बलूचिस्तान में कोई गिरोह हो सकता है वो सिंध में हो सकता है वो के में हो सकता है पंजाब में हो सकता है आप उसको शेयर होल्डिंग और इक्वल रिकग्नेशन के तहत जब देखेंगे तो आप बेसिक प्रिंसिपल ऑफ नेशन स्टेट को डिफाई कर देंगे जब हम प्रिंसिपल्स के साथ एग्री कर जाएंगे फिर उसकी एप्लीकेशन पे बात हो सकती है आप ऑपरेशन uh, थिएटर के अंदर जो है ना क्वालिफाइड लोगों को पेशेंट को हाथ लगाने देते हैं ना मतलब मैं अगर कल को स्टेथोस्कोप गले में डाल लूँ और एक वाइट कोट पहन लूँ That does not qualify me to treat that patient or or do the surgical procedure. उसके लिए मुझे certain principles या procedures से खुद गुजरना पड़ेगा तब I would be or she would be allowed ना तो रियासत वो nursing care है जिसने जिसको surgical procedure करने का या वो वो medical qualification उसकी हुई हुई है जो इसको treat कर सकता है यस yes, इस प्रोसीजर को जो पॉलिटिक्स का है आगे बढ़ना चाहिए मैं खुद जाती तौर पे सिंपथाइज करता हूँ और गिलगित को 
इन्हांस स्टेटस के साथ कम पॉपुलेशन है बहुत ज़्यादा रिसोर्स हैं ये हमारा सिंगापुर होना चाहिए लेकिन आपकी अलहदा कोई शनाख्त नहीं है आपकी शनाख्त मेरे साथ जुड़ी हुई है मेरी शनाख्त आपके साथ जुड़ी हुई है जो 1947 का इंडिपेंडेंस एक्ट था ना उसमें जिसके तहत दो डोमिनन पाकिस्तान और हिंदुस्तान के हैं उसमें सिर्फ और सिर्फ ये इख्तियार कानूनी तौर पे दिया गया था कि या तो आप पाकिस्तान के साथ शामिल हो जाएं या हिंदुस्तान के साथ तीसरा इख्तियार था नहीं अगर वो तीसरा इख्तियार होगा तो एक नए इंटरनेशनल ऑर्डर की तरफ हमें जाना पड़ेगा जो फिलहाल मौजूद नहीं है तो लिहाजा जो आपके अकाबरीन ने एक्सरसाइज की हुई है टू जॉइन एंड रिमेन एंड स्टे विद द स्टेट ऑफ पाकिस्तान लेट स्ट्रेंथ इन दैट और नेशन बिल्डिंग प्रोजेक्ट पर फोकस करते हैं थैंक यू my only request is to keep questions uh, concise and articulate them briefly so that all of us will get an opportunity to ask our questions so if i see hands up again i'll stay on that side uh, there's a, a young lady in pink uh, vasila you can get him assalam alaikum sir 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 good morning sir assalam alaikum sir i am vasila kakar from sheen balochistan wow did you know uh, no <laughs> I am a fourth year medical student here. First of uh, all, I would like to express my gratitude for your presence here. It's truly an honor to have you address us. So my question is basically on the healthcare situation of Quetta. Um, I know this topic has been brought on multiple occasions, but I think so it never got the required attention. So as we know, there was a recent outbreak of uh, Congo virus in Quetta, and 12 or more uh, healthcare workers of ours got infected, and unfortunately we lost few of them. And if I'm If I recall properly, there was a similar outbreak that happened in 2011. Yeah, and, carry on. And we lost two of our healthcare workers. So fast forward 12 years, and instead our healthcare uh, to get to better or even to remain stable, it has even gotten worse. So even even during this recent outbreak, there was lack of necessary facilities to prevent the spread to treat those affected individuals. We even uh, didn't have the required uh, timely uh, availability of air ambulances and other facilities to shift those uh, critical patients to a better tertiary care hospital in Karachi. And if it was there, maybe we would have saved those lives. So my question is, K, what are your plans, or what is the government planning to do about it? Or is uh, this topic will be kept aside as it has been the case in the past? Thank you. First of all, I'm I'm so glad to see you. Hailing from Pishin, from the uh, same tribe, and uh, you are having quite a remarkable contribution over here, and I'm I'm very proud of that. Keep doing the good job, and inshallah we'll have a hospital in Quetta one day under your leadership. Uh, <laughs> this, these these are the challenges of the governance which we need to understand. You know, there was a political discourse. for last many years and for almost many decades if i would i would say it that all the provinces wanted more autonomy and as a result of that 2008 we get 18th amendment and the financial and political power that are transferred to the provinces with a caveat that after that it have to be followed by a provincial finance commission the process halted there and we got an nfc the 18th amendment is there the concurrent list from the federal government was diluted and now all the provinces have got their uh, more political and financial powers and health is a devolved subject now when health is a devolved subject what do you do you can well of course federal government to an extent can play some role but when you have given all the money to the province it is now their discretion that how do they spend it i am saying this with pain uh, i am not enjoying it i, I don't blot over uh, the kind of capacity we have at the provinces particularly political and bureaucratic is part of the problem is part of the problem you do not see any kind of visionary uh, leadership either in bureaucracy or in uh, political class so where is the planning section i mean you have got a hospital in the heart of the town which is what 
more than 100 years old, almost. It uh, was constructed somewhere in 1920s or 1930s, early 1930s. For the population of eight to 9,000 people. And now, the documented, according to the census, it's three million plus population, and the conservative estimate, which is not non-documented, I think so, the population is more than five million. And the same hospital is providing services, and with this devolution of the power, there is no vision how to magnify, how to amplify the services which is the need of the population. <clears throat> you are talking about the subspecialties and, and uh, the rest of the ideas associated with it. We do not even have sense of basic health care. How do we do that? And one challenge is there is a scarcity of resource. The other is mismanagement of resource. We need 1,000 rupees, but we've got 100 rupees. And I mismanage those 100 rupees too. So that is the challenge. How do, how, what do we do with that? It is directly related to our political system, our governance system. So as an individual, after two months when I would be retiring from this stint, how much I can do? It would be uh, mere uh, rhetorics or uh, shallow slogans. That is part of the problem. If somebody wants to contribute, I think so they should come and participate in a responsible political process. Until unless you do not have visionary and good individuals in politics, forget it. Then we will outsource it to these clubs be it the club of popularity or dispopularity, whatever the case is, but the actual issue of governance would never be attended in this country. This is my honest opinion on that. Thank you. Okay. I turn to the center. Uh, there's a young man sitting behind. <coughs> Please go ahead. Uh, if you can get a mic. Thank you so much, Honorable Prime Minister of Co Visit AKU. My name is Vijay Kumar. I am from District Sangar. I am second year nursing student. Sir, my question is that as there is five percent uh, quota for minority in the government job, but sir, as you know, the minority are mostly belonging from the underprivileged area and they belong from the low socioeconomic. So, sir, they have hardly have access about the higher education. So, sir what you can do to maximum opportunity for them to compete to get higher education. Because sir, mostly, jo amare, uh, uh, district sangar ya sir, interim jo sir, students hote hain, to sir, wo metric ya intermediate karke, school ko left out kar dhe. Because sir, universities ki fees is zyada hoti hain, to sir, usme minority students kam hi participate kar vaate hain. To sir, iske liye koi ikdamat aap. Thank you sir. Thank you Vijay. Ek to mein aapko, mein ne 2008 mein pehli matab a kaumi assembly ka election gada tha. تو آپ کو بتا ہے کہ الیکشن کے دورانیے میں آپ کو ہر قسم کی کمیونٹی سے ووٹ کی اٹریکشن کی کوشش آپ کرتے ہیں تو کوئٹا کا اگر کوئی ہے ان کو پتا ہے کہ عیسیٰ نگری وہاں پہ کرسچن کمیونٹی بہت زیادہ ہماری بڑی تعداد میں رہتی ہے جب میں وہاں جاتا تھا اور ان کو ریکویسٹ کرتا تھا تو کینبسنگ فور دو ووٹنگ تو وہ کہتے تھے کہ ہمارے جو سینیٹیشن کی جابز ہے اس میں مسلمز آ رہے ہیں اور یہ ڈسکرمنیشن ہے ہمارے گینسٹ تو مجھے آگ لگ جاتی تھی اور میں ان کو خوب سلواتے سناتا تھا کہ یار میں چاہتا ہوں کہ تمہارا بیٹا ڈاکٹر بنے کمپیوٹر سائنٹس بنے تم سینٹیشن میں پسے ہو ایک تو کمیونٹی میں جو انفیوز کرنا ہے سنس آف کانفیڈنس وہ سب سے بڑی بات ہے You are not a minority, you are just someone with diversified background, with a different background. You are equal Pakistani. You are so much as I am. My name is Mabap Nianwar, you have kept Vijay. You are born in Sangar, I am born in the world, I am born in the world, I am born in the world. Our lives are different. Our lives are different. تم سندھی بولتے ہو میں پشتو بولتا ہوں 
हमारे पास विजय कुमार है वो पश्तो बोलता है आपके पास कोई अनवार होगा वो सिंधी बोलता होगा एक तो जो हमें सोशल लेवल पे जो काम करना है वो ये है हमारे यहाँ बहुत सारे लोगों ने मुख्तलिफ रियासतों के नाम से के हवाले से भी सियासत में उनका इस्तेमाल होता है जो असल में मदीना की रियासत के असूल थे वो यही है जो मैं आपके साथ बयान कर रहा हूँ उसमें इक्वालिटी थी बराबरी थी जिम्मेदारी के हवाले से हुकूक के हवाले से बहुत मशहूर एक वाक्य है कि एक हिपोक्रेसी के तहत मुनाफ्त के तहत एक मुसलमान का उस वक्त का उसका मसला एक ईमानदार यहूदी के साथ पड़ गया तो उसने कहा कि जी हमारा ये जो डिस्प्यूट है इसकी रेजोल्यूशन कैसे करें डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन मेकनिज्म दुनिया में सबसे मुश्किल काम उसने कहा यार मुझे नहीं पता मैं तुम्हारे जो पैगम्बर हैं उनकी तरफ जा रहा हूँ उनसे कराऊँगा यहूदी ने कहा वो जो मेरी तरह का था उसने कहा नहीं यार ये तो मैं फंस जाऊँगा उसने कहा नहीं जी वो जो तुम लोगों का लीडर है उससे कराते हैं उसने कहा नहीं मैं उससे नहीं करा रहा दे इवेंचुअली वेंट देयर और वो उस यहूदी के हक में हो गई फैसला क्योंकि वो मेरिट था जब तक हम मेरिटोक्रेसी को इंकरेज नहीं करेंगे इनफोर्स नहीं करेंगे समटाइम्स इवन पॉजिटिव डिस्क्रिमिनेशन खराबी पैदा करती हमें माइनॉरिटीज uh, में उनके कोटे को बढ़ाने के लिए समाज में मौाक़े पैदा करने होंगे सोसाइटी में मौाक़े पैदा करने होंगे हमें खुल के ये बातें करनी होंगी जो मैं शायद आज इस बंद कमरे में कर रहा हूँ हमें हर जगह पे करनी होंगी और विजय को आ, वैसे मैं बाय द वे आपको एक बात बताऊँ कि नर्सिंग के प्रोफेशन के साथ मेरी बड़ी जज्बाती वाबस्तगी और मैं समझता हूँ इट इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट नोबल प्रोफेशन काश काश हम नर्सिंग को वो एहतराम और वो स्टेटस दे सकते जो वो डिजर्व करते हैं पूरी दुनिया में ये जो आप डॉक्टर हैं वो ये तो सिर्फ पेशेंट को दो चार आठ दस मिनट के लिए देखते हैं उसके बाद ये वार्ड से निकल जाते हैं नर्सेस दे आर दन हु टेक केयर ऑफ पेशेंट एंड दे आर द वन who are responsible for for the so called nursing care or is it is one of the most well paid well respected well received jo bade bade doctor mere dost america mein uk mein hai wo khushkismati samajhte hain ki kisi nurse se shaadi ho jaye uska social status bad jata hai aur ek hamare yahan pata nahi humne is profession ke sath kya zulm kiya hua hai to तुम माइनॉरिटी से ज्यादा अपने इस प्रोफेशन के लिए एडवोकेसी करो योर आइडेंटिटी एज ए नर्स इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट देन योर आइडेंटिटी एज विजय और सोसाइटी को स्टेट को इसमें किरदार जरूर अदा करना चाहिए जो भी कम्युनिटीज डिसएडवांटेज हैं उसमें इंटरवेंशन होनी चाहिए ताकि वो इंक्लूसिवनेस आ जाए वो इंकरेज हो इसमें आपकी कम्युनिटी के जो लीडर्स हैं उनको कॉपरेट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी uh, का किरदार अदा करना चाहिए जितने सेठ अरबों खरबों रुपए कमा रहे हैं ना इनके साथ हम इंगेज करेंगे जो खजूरें और छुआरे बेचते हैं हिंदुस्तान और मुख्तलिफ ममालिक में वो अपने एक हिस्से का शेयर जो है ना वो इस कम्यूनिटी की डेवलपमेंट के लिए उनको डेडिकेट करना चाहिए दूसरे कम्यूनिटी में प्राइवेट सेक्टर को करना चाहिए तो ऐसे अंदाज में सोचना चाहिए जो आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स हो लेकिन आई एम फुली फॉर इट as a nurse and as a vijay you should grow to the excellence of your life i'm a researcher so we shouldn't discredit all the <laughs> physicians who do honorable work uh it, there's a sitting right behind the president there is a young lady beta yeah, yeah. betho aaram se koi uthne ki zarurat nahi hai aaram se apni jagah pe baat Assalamu alaikum sir. My name is Mayra Mubashir and I'm a year 1 MSPH student here at AKU and I belong from Punjab. That's a Masters of Public Health. Public Health okay. Yes. So sir as we navigate through this economical crisis and as somebody who's looking forward to staying here in Pakistan and working here I want to ask what is the government's vision uh, to promote public health research in Pakistan and are there any policies or initiatives in place to promote research within this realm 
Well, uh, if, if I give you a specific answer to the public health research, uh, probably it would be based on rhetoric without having a real information because this is not one of the uh, area which is under my prime responsibility. I have delegated this to a ministerial position of Minister of Health and then so on and so forth. But if you ask me that is there any requirement for it, of course it is. It's one of the most important areas. Uh, Chai wo prevention ki surat mein ho, uh, other than that ho. But specifically, if I would be able in a position to give you or enlighten you about a policy, uh, right now I can't do it. But I'm more than happy to share with, with your uh, moderator or uh, administration. And we can give you uh, the latest status, what is going on. And if there is any feedback and input on that, we would also welcome that. Thank you. I would really like someone from uh, one of our educationists to perhaps ask a question. There's a gentleman uh, there. If you so, could thank you. So uh, my name is Suhail. I'm a PhD Put student. Us mic, uh, uh, please open. I'm a PhD student at uh, KUID, uh, Khan University Institute for Educational Development. And I am from Mardan, Khaybar, Pakhtunkhwa. Oh, good. So, uh, uh, so we got so GB, we got Baluchistan, KP, Punjab. Wow. <laughs> And the gender what representation. Random, what a random uh, fix. Huh? So, uh, first of all, sir, uh, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. In fact, it's uh, very f uh, few people have such type of opportunity to directly interact with the policy makers, even in fact, the leader of the state. So, thank you very much. Sir, I have uh, two questions and uh, I would request you to please. Uh, if possible, give respond to the both of the two questions, and so so I'm not from the political background. I'm from the education, so the question are okay. only related Even if to you are from the political education. Mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, the first question is related to uh, education crisis in the country of Pakistan, and how it is a future national security threat for the country. Uh, sir, recently there was uh, an international examination of trends in international maths and science study where international global uh, countries have participated and Pakistan got second position but from the top, from the bottom. So which means that uh, a very rare few students of our current, currently enrolled students in schools uh, have like the ability to understand maths and science. There is another study conducted by the Khan University Institute for Educational Development, uh, which also shows that uh, overwhelming majority of Pakistani students have weak understanding in maths and science. And how the teachers are teaching, it's also in an outdated way. Now, if this country has to uh, develop, if we have to develop maths or science technology mein hi develop karna hai aur jis humne dekh liya ki duniya ke un logon ne tarakki ki jinhone maths science ko acha kiya technology mein unhone kiya to how can uh, with this current crisis and maths and science in the country uh, don't you think it's a national security threat and uh, is there any way ke aapki jo uh, national security councils wagaira ke national security issues discuss hoke have you ever discussed those such type of issue and what you have planned. So if you allow me, I can ask, just pose the short question. That is the short question. And that is related to the quality of higher education mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and especially in the time when there is a more emphasis on the expansion, expansion of universities in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, there is a financial crisis in the universities. You, uh, you must be aware in the Peshawar University and the Balochistan University and many other universities, they, they don't have sufficient budget to care for the salary. So what the government is going and recently in previous government, we have seen that there was an amendment to establish new university. Mm -hmm. As a caretaker for a minister, how do you see and uh, what would be your response? Okay. Thank you so much. I think so very pertinent questions, both of them. The first time I've heard you stumped. <laughs> I'm bold. Uh, the, the issue is that it's not that 
I I don't have anything to say. Uh, but let me start with another Persian verse. You know, there was a famous uh, Persian poet by the name of Mirza Abdul Qadir Bedil. Mm. And Bedil, according to the Iqbal in the age of youth, uh, God saved him from atheism, but it was Bedil. So Bedil is a symbol of quite deep and profound poetry with, with beautiful metaphors. He says, Sukhan ha dash tam as dust gai ilm of fun bedil. Sukhan ha is a plural. That I have so much to say from the realm of knowledge and skill. He has differentiated between the two. Sukhan ha dash tam as dust gai ilm of fun bedil. Bahamoshi yakin amshad. I started believing in silence. Kepur be hu da me guftam because I started talking nonsense. So with this pretext, I'm going to respond to both of your queries. Unfortunately, in this country, our priorities have not been in the right place. When there is a crisis in higher education system, where you cannot allocate funds to carry on and impart the knowledge which is required for the building of uh, this edifice of, of your nation, you allocate in the name of development billions and billions of funds to the member of the National Assembly and Provincial Assemblies, which, in my opinion, uh, is quite criminal. What do you do? You are, uh, have chosen a system which ensures the political positioning because of this constitutional arrangement. I am more interested about my trend on Twitter rather than understanding that what is the importance of science and mathematics for the, again, uh, the real edifice of this nation to which I claim that I am very much committed. So what do I do? I, even if I portray myself that, oh, I am the distinguished and the different one, would it make a difference? <laughs> no. I'm just an individual. An individual who's been assigned for a limited time span a task which I will do in whatever capacity I can, something good, something not that good, but I'll just retire to the dustbin of the history. But these questions which you are raising, they'll remain. And we do not have any strategic clearance and direction on that. And that is part of the tragedy. Yes, there is a realization when you interact with the people who are responsible for the national security of this country. We do discuss these things on different forums. But those discussions are not translated because of the kind of the political arrangement you have in this country. The discussions are about the constituency based. What is the whole political discourse at this moment? We are just having uh, elections around the corner. Have you seen any mainstream talk show on this topic that what is the level of understanding of mathematics and science in this country? from all your private media outlets. There is a era of vlogs these days. Have you heard any of the vlog on this topic? So you are a lone individual raising a question and I'm a lone individual responding to that. Wo kya tha ke khub guzre ki jab mil baithenge diwane do. Wo wali kaifiyat hai? Generally, मुझे specialized या informed individuals में ये realization होगी है, लेकिन it is not being translated as a policy as an implementing arm of the government, and that is the challenge. मुझे जितनी भी समझ हो, एहसास हो, अगर वो translate ना हो, उस implementation में policies के क्या फायदा उसका? میں بہت خوبصورت گفتگو یہاں کر کے نکل جاؤں گا آپ سے اپریسیشن لے لوں گا 
लेकिन मेरे जो सात साल का बच्चा है उसको टू प्लस टू इज इक्वल टू फोर की समझ नहीं आएगी वो जो टूल्स उसको चाहिए या बच्ची को वो मिलने चाहिए इसके लिए एडवोकेसी की ज़रूरत है अवेयरनेस की ज़रूरत है आप जैसे लोगों को बोलने की ज़रूरत है जो आपने अभी की है यू हैव कंट्रीब्यूटेड दिस इज़ द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑनस्ट टू गॉड आप अपने अलाइंसेस बनाएं अपने इंस्टीट्यूशन के अंदर अलाइंसेस बनाएं अपने इंस्टीट्यूशन से बाहर अलाइंसेस बनाएं बिकॉज दीज आर दॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग्स विच गेट अटेंशन आउट ऑफ अ मिशन आउट ऑफ अ पैशन जब तक आपको पैशन इसके पीछे नहीं होगा नो बडी वुड लिसन जॉल्ट पीपल डू समथिंग नास्टी डू समथिंग डिफरेंट सीक अटेंशन ताकि लोग मुतवजे हों इस बात ये ये वो छोटे छोटे टूल्स हैं जिसमें आप लोगों को यू कैन नॉक नॉक एंड द स्लीपिंग सोल्स लाइक आस मे गेट अवेकन बट दिस इज द स्टेट ऑफ अफेयर्स विच आई एम ऑनेस्टली शेयरिंग विद यू एज मच एज आई कैन Your Excellency this is a rich discussion and you can see the hands going up so with your permission we'll Please. continue to take I apologize I actually can't see the people in the back so uh I mean if I could just get you to get the mic to the gentleman who's standing right next to you or sitting ji go ahead Assalamu alaikum uh, my name is Amir Ibani I'm a final year medical student um I was born in Japan and I was then brought up in Karachi since about 2010 You so were question, born in Japan. Yes. My mom is Japanese. Mashallah. Yes. Ah. So um my question I'm I'm a final year medical student. I am soon to graduate inshallah next year and my question is about the the lack of employment opportunities in Pakistan, the 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 brain drain, the issue of brain drain in Pakistan where I would love to work in Pakistan. I consider Pakistan my home. I've been here for all these years. But the issue is you see this mass exodus of students just fleeing the country um seeking better opportunities in countries like the middle east in 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 countries like the us and the uk what do you think the government what do you think you can do perhaps uh during your tenure in office about this issue thank you thank you and first of all don't consider it home it is home it's not just a consideration and uh, you are one of us you know and uh, i'm so happy to see you and someone like you who owns pakistan in the way you are doing it please sit sit uh i've been misquoted on the social media on this one also so at this time i would i would be very careful what i have to say <laughs> i don't see this issue as in in isolation I try to be quite pragmatic about it that why there's a mass migration from point A to point B and migration has been throughout in human history a reality the sedentary populations they have moved from one place to another for the in search of different and challenging opportunities driving the ambition to conquer and then in this modern age the economic immigration is the primary drive which take people from one place to another until and unless you do not have a developed settled structure back home there would be people who would be moving from point one to another why do these people go either to gcc or to uk or to us if i have a 7 or 8 years old kid i want Uh, him or her to have access to good education uh, good infrastructure relatively secure environment so these are the three four five factors which are driving people to choose uh, their their position of permanent stay and if any of those indicators are not promising that much uh whatever they call home then you cannot halt this process but this process is not eternal it's not perpetual it has its shelf life uh in india i've been uh trying to give explanation on this account that in early 60s 
people immigrated towards the Western Hemisphere, they settled in the US, they settled in the UK, other European countries, and they spent some 30, 40 good years over there, uh, developed their expertise, gained certain capital, and in the uh, early 90s when the uh, Indian economy started liberalizing itself, it attracted all of that, and that brain drain become after four decades its brain assets. Along with their capital and their expertise, they went back, they invested in their home country. Medical tourism is one of the finest going over there, thanks to the doctors who were settled in the US in the American medical system for four decades. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been in a position to offer those services even in the private sector. So if this situation is right now happening with the Pakistan, we need to, one, should not take it with a negative connotation. If a nurse or a doctor or an IT expert is going out into the global supply chain of services, this is what exactly I want. I would be earning through those individuals and it would be contributing into my GDP and overall economic health. So this is not a curse. I don't know why people is projecting as a curse. There is a nuance to that and a sense of despondency is being created that, oh, look at this. The whole young generation is so despondent. They are abandoning their home country and home uh, towns and they would turn into ghost towns and they will all leave it. This is not going to happen. This process would be quite natural. What we need is to do, do the due diligence and wherever the gaps are being created, try to fill those gaps. We are a country of 240 or 250 million people. It's a huge population. If let's say 100,000, 200,000 or 400,000 useful individual goes and settles somewhere else, they have not entirely divorced from your society. They are still connected to your society. From where do we get uh, our remittances of around 18 to 19 billion dollars a year? From the same kind of people who left a decade ago or a two decade ago or a three decade ago and they are uh, from the town of Mirpur to other towns who are settled in UK or US or GCC countries, they are actually our assets. So these are the new assets which we are developing or in, in an organic manner they are being developed. So I, I do not see it with a no negative connotation, but at the same time, we need to develop our own infrastructure, make the indicators better, and one area is to export services to earn money, not the whole of it. The, in, the rest of the GDP has to be focused on, and uh, the domestic produce has to be made better. I think we'll take one last question from this side. I feel like we've ignored this side. So uh, the lady in front, uh, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister, Jazakallah, for giving us the opportunity. We are really grateful to have you. Um, I'm Amna Sohail, and I'm from Karachi. I'm a final year dental hygiene student at mm -hmm. AKU. Um, to give you a brief intro of what dental hygiene is, it was initiated in 2015 with the intent of preventative care, emphasizing the role and importance of oral health. So my question to you would be the ab of regarding the absence of licensing body in Pakistan for this profession. What steps can be taken to ensure that there is a standardization of framework in Pakistan. Secondly, regarding uh, the use of smokeless tobacco, um, pan, gutka, chalia, tambaku, naswar, ye sab, uh, Karachi mein is bahut zyada prevalent. Hai. Thank so God she didn't ask for cigars. So, <laughs> 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 iske liye hum kya kar sakte? What can the government do to regulate? And yeah, thank you so much. Uh, First of all, uh, let me share that I have appointed a SAPM on medical education and uh, patient care. 
Uh, he's a professional. I, I'm sure many of you would be knowing Dr. Amir Bilal. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a cardiothoracic surgeon. Mm -hmm. And one of the area was that licensing, imparting medical education, not just uh, in the dental uh, arena, but otherwise the entire medical profession, undergrad, postgrad, and the rest. And the kind of a mushroom growth these private businesses uh, and the kind of a harm they have done to the produce which we are having uh, clearly shows our commitment that we give a priority to this area. Again, with your specific query, uh, I don't have something at the back of my mind, but if you are interested, we can link you to the our SAPM's office, and uh, your inputs would be very much encouraged, and we would welcome that, and e even uh, anyone else also. Uh, and he probably would be on a visit here in, in Karachi also, uh, and, and I can arrange a meeting Thank you. Uh, with, with our Khan University and other professionals also. So you can have a discussion on all the details and give your valuable inputs also there. Uh, I think we do have to end, and I want to just appreciate uh, the Honorable Prime Minister uh, for your candor uh, and really just the insight that you've been able to provide to us. This conversation could go on for hours, uh, and I'm happy to do so. But uh, the uh, and I'll apologize uh, to all the students for the questions that we couldn't take. But I think the Prime Minister has been very open to receiving those kinds of comments and feedback and questions. And with his permission, I'll be happy to send them over to your office if you would like please, to continue to answer please. some of these difficult questions. Please. I mean, I, I have a number which is uh, available on the Google. So you can directly WhatsApp to me also. <laughs> it's not an issue. So we'll end here by uh, thanking the Prime Minister for taking the time out to be with us. I want to thank everybody in the audience, but particularly the students who have asked uh, these very, very, uh, these questions that are going to impact not just their own lives, but the lives of everybody uh, in the country. So thank you, everybody, for being here, and we'll continue this discourse offline. Inshallah. Thank, sure. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. نکرا وزیراعظم انوار الحقہ کڑاقہ خان یونیورسٹی کے 